Hi guys, Dr. Colbreth here to talk about the hydraulic lift. And first we need to get uh, some vocabulary out of the way. The use of a pressurized liquid to do useful work is a technology known as hydraulics. So the hydraulic lift is one example of a hydraulic system or a hydraulic device. And all hydraulics depend on Pascal's principle. So if we have a reservoir here and we have several points in the reservoir and we want to calculate the pressure at each of those points, well we can just use the hydrostatic uh, pressure equation and get that the pressure at point A here is equal to the surface pressure plus the density of the fluid times G times the depth of point A. Similarly we can calculate the pressure at point B, the pressure at point C, and the pressure at point D. Now what Pascal's principle says is that if we increase the pressure here by pressing on our piston with a force, um, then the result is that <clears throat> the pressure changes everywhere in the fluid. So if we calculate the new pressure at A, we get the new pressure at A is the air pressure plus this delta P, that's the surface pressure altogether, plus the density of the fluid times G times the depth at A. And we can repeat this calculation at B and at C and D. And you'll note that this expression for PA prime is actually uh, just PA plus the change in pressure delta P. Same goes for BB prime and the rest. And so Pascal's principle says that a change in the pressure at one point in an incompressible fluid appears undiminished at all points in the fluid. So if we increase the pressure or decrease the pressure in one place in an incompressible fluid, then we are going to see the same change in pressure everywhere else in the fluid. So let's return to our hydraulic lift. Uh, we're going to specify that the piston on the left has an area A1 and the piston on, our, on the right has an area A2. And <clears throat> we can apply a force F1 to the piston on the left and we're going to apply a big force F2 to the piston on the right. Here uh, this is a hydraulic lift so in this case we're going to be uh, lifting a car. So as with most uh, hydrostatic pressure problems, we're going to approach this uh, by calculating the pressure uh, at two different points in the fluid at the same height. Uh, so we're going to calculate the pressure at point A and we're going to calculate the pressure at point B. So starting with uh, the pressure at point A, we get that the pressure at A is equal to the air pressure plus the pressure due to the applied force F1, which is just going to be F1 divided by the area over which it's applied, which is A1. We can repeat our calculation at point B. We're going to get that the pressure at point B is the air pressure plus F2 divided by the area uh, which it's applied over, so the pressure due to force number two, and then plus the weight of the liquid, rho times G times H. So <clears throat> we also have, um, we also have uh, some increased pressure at point B because we have this column of water uh, above point B. So that's where this third term comes from. Um, and since these ali uh, lie on the same horizontal line in the connected fluid, um, we can apply the pressure at A is equal to the pressure at B. And we can substitute in these two terms. On the left we have the air pressure plus uh, the force F1 divided by A1. And on the right we have our, our expression for the pressure at point B. And we can see immediately that the air pressure is going to cancel from both sides. And uh, then what we want to do is multiply both sides. In this case, we're going to multiply both sides by A2. And so now we can do some simplification. Uh, we're going to have a cancellation of an A2 on the right-hand side of the equation. Um, and then the rest is just some multiplication. So as we uh, drop the parentheses and combine our terms, we end up uh, with this expression here. And our goal is to solve this for F2 in terms of F1. So if we rearrange the terms, we get that F2 is equal to the ratio of the areas, A2 divided by A1 times the force F1. And then we have minus this term due to the uh, column of water <clears throat> um, because the car is at a higher height uh, than the piston, or A2 is at a higher height than the piston A1. Um, so we also have to, uh, we have the contribution due to this distance here and the column of water. <clears throat> Now, <clears throat> this is the weight of the fluid, as I just explained, and for conceptual sort of exploration, it's worth considering the situation where the weight of the fluid is small. So we're going to neglect this term and look at the terms that we have left. And so we just have that the force number two uh, is equal to 
the area number two divided by area one times force number one. And let's note that by Newton's third law, this F2 is also uh, the force, it's equal in magnitude to the force that the fluid exerts on the car. So by pushing down uh, with a force F1 over here, we exert a force on the car from the fluid, uh, which can be quite a bit larger than our force F1. If the area, as shown in this picture, is much bigger, area two is much bigger than area one, uh, we're gonna have that the force number two uh, is much larger than force one. So hydraulics are being used here as a force multiplier. We put in 10 newtons here, and then if this area is much larger, if this area is 10 times larger up here, we get a 100 newton force uh, exerted on the car. Um, so this just comes down to Pascal's principle and the fact that the pressure is undiminished throughout the fluid, and here we have uh, that pressure being exerted over a much larger area. Um, and so we have a, a force multiplication. You can think of this like uh, a lever or um, <clears throat> when we have a tension in a rope. Um, if we run that rope over pulleys, we can also uh, perform a force multiplication. And, and this mechanism is really no different. And well, no different in terms of its sort of physical implications. And I think to sort of convince you that this is allowed, because it seems like we're getting something for nothing, I think it's worthwhile to consider the energy uh, associated with actually uh, moving this piston down and the car moving up. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. <clears throat> if we depress the piston on the left a distance d1, the piston on the right is going to move up a distance d2. And the total f volume of the fluid is unchanged. So when we depress piston number one, some fluid, fluid flows into piston two, um, and the same volume of fluid uh, that leaves piston one must enter piston two. So if we look at this volume here that leaves piston one, that must be the same volume up here uh, that enters piston two. So volume one is equal to volume two. And we don't know the volume explicitly, but we do know the area, A1, and the distance. So that's going to give us volume 1 is A1, D1. And similarly, area 2 times this distance is going to give us the volume of this region over here. So that's A2 times D2. Rearranging a little bit, we can get that A2 divided by A1, the ratio of the areas is equal to the ratio of the distances, or the inverse ratio of the distances. We have A2 over A1 over here. We have D1 divided by D2 over here. And now we can substitute this expression in uh, over here for A2 divided by A1. So we get uh, F2 is equal to D1 divided by D2 times F1. And we can rearrange this one more time, and we end up with, on the left-hand side, uh, F2 times D2 is equal to F1 times D1. So here we have a small force F1 times a big distance D1, and that's equal to a big force F2 times a small distance D2. So we have force times distance. This is units of energy or joules. We have force times distance over here, which also has units of energy or joules. Um, and we see that this is essentially a statement of conservation of energy, that the force times the distance on one side uh, must be equal to the force times the distance on the other side. So we aren't actually getting something for nothing here. Um, if we exert this small force, we have to exert it over a much larger distance. And for anyone who's ever lifted a car up with a hydraulic jack, you know that you need to swing the arm on the jack many, many times, cover a large distance of exerting that force on the jack handle. Uh, to move the car up only a couple of inches, although you have to exert a much greater force uh, to move the car. And remember that we did apply, uh, before coming up with this expression, uh, we did apply uh, a simplification in that we, uh, we neglected the weight of the fluid. We also have to work when we pump this piston down to lift the weight of this fluid up. Uh, so there is an extra contribution there due to the weight of the fluid, um, but... <clears throat> That is not really um, essential for this point that I'm proving here. Uh, we just need to know that the work that you do do on this small piston goes both into uh, moving the car up and moving the liquid up. So you would have another term over here uh, for the fluid weight as well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's all I have in terms of introductory remarks for the hydraulic lift. Uh, I do have an example problem video on the website, so I encourage you to check that out as well.